Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back. So today we are in a Costco up here in Los Angeles that is probably the second best Costco in all of Southern California to go wander in for bourbon, which is the Costco in the city of Hawthorne. Also, <laughs> by the way, watch out for those traffic uh, lights there. They have red light traffic cameras on there and they are definitely not just for show. Anyways, uh, we see a very nice offering out from the good folks at High West, a rendezvous rye, as well as a very interesting scotch that piqued my interest, the Glenlivet 15, uh, French oak barrels, and really so, so much more. Now, before we get to the video, if you like these videos, uh, if you like really all of our videos, uh, whether it's the wanders or the hauls or the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really <laughs> all the amazing stuff that we have cooking up for you, <laughs> we have a ton, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, because it does really help the channel to grow and we are so, so thankful for that. But also because you get updates when our newest videos come out on Sundays, when our shorts come out sort of in between randomly and when our other videos come out in between all of that. Now, let's get down to the video. All right, so while we are getting warmed up and hopefully while you are getting warmed up, let's do a real quick whiskey check and I'll get a glass. You know what, I think today I am going to enjoy a, something a little mm, special, at least a specialty item that uh, maybe didn't do as well as it should have, um, but is still interesting, which is this Kentucky Owl St. Patrick's inspired bourbon whiskey. I think the idea was to try to make bourbon that tastes like scotch, which I don't know, I kind of defeats the point, but uh, yeah, there's still a lot of it on the shelf if you're ever looking for it. So let's see if we can get a pop here. Hey, that's pretty good. And uh, let's get a little juice. Oh, yeah. All right. And whiskey. Let's face it. You can never really drink too much of it. You can only just kind of sort of drink it too fast. Cheers. Mmm. I don't get the Irish whiskey in there, but pretty good bourbon. All right. So first up for today is a whiskey that we see that is a great whiskey in its own right. But oftentimes it sort of gets a backseat to its more hyped and slightly more polished sibling. And by polished, I mean finished, which is the Midwinter's Night's Dram. But in this case, we see the High West Rendezvous Rye, which is a yearly release of rye whiskey out of the Utah-based distiller High West. It's made with great care and year after year is made with less and less sourced whiskey, meaning that the whiskey that they make is more and more in-house. High West as a whole is more of a recent crop of American whiskey makers. And although we don't have this one, we have Midwinter's Night's Dram, of course, as well as the High West Campfire, which was a bit of an oddity, <laughs> to say the least. But High West in general is one of those American whiskey makers who have sort of shunned the traditional Kentucky politics and social graces that are, you know, really dedicated to the traditional old school good old boys club of bourbon making. First, they started off by making blends with source whiskey, but eventually, as of right now, are starting kind of up their own distilleries and easing in uh, to the blends with their own whiskeys uh, mixed in with some source whiskeys. Kind of like how you put a toe into a hot jacuzzi or into a cold pool. The Rendezvous Rye is uh, actually going to have a mash bill of 95% uh, rye and 5% malted barley. That is for the MGP sourced uh, whiskey. And then it's blended in with 80% rye and 20% malted barley from the in-house High West distillate. Uh, it doesn't have an age statement on it, uh, but it says allegedly that the whiskey is between the ages of four and eight years old. And I think very notable uh, here is to point out that the rye content is really, really high for either of the blends that are mixed together. Because oftentimes you will see a 51% uh, at a minimum, obviously for a rye whiskey, uh, or even in like that 50s kind of range, but at 80% or above, I mean that I would definitely consider a high rye mash bill. Not 15% like some of the other high rye mash bills. Now uh, we see this uh, rendezvous right here at uh, the Costco in Hawthorne for $59.99, which is uh, a pretty close, about as close as you're gonna get to MSRP on it. And it really doesn't look like the next best price at Total Wine is that far off at $60.99. Also, also, it can be found at BevMo, uh, but of course at the higher end of the range at $74.99. I wonder why BevMo is always more expensive. I don't feel like you get better service. What are you actually paying extra for? So either way, if we had bought it here at the Costco in Hawthorne, uh, which at this point I'm thinking I should have, 
uh, then we would have saved one dollar off the total wine price uh, or a grand total of 1.6 percent but luckily total wine still has it in stock so i can still pick it up if i need to on the way home the ABV on the Rendezvous Rye is at 46%, which, you know, it's it's not a lot, but I think there is definitely something to be said here for whiskey that understands that ABV is not king. The palate is king. And although I do love a good ABV and a good mouth fire, a well-balanced rye with an ABV that complements rather than overpowers the palate is always going to be a plus in my book. The tasting notes that I could find on it, and for an amalgam of the reviews that I could find, uh, the consensus is that it is good, that it is quite good and it is definitely above average on the palate they also mentioned things like an oily mouthfeel which is actually a really good thing a strong rye spice which i know i sure love and things like cinnamon pepper nuttiness and baked dark fruits which is again a very very nice fall time sort of whiskey the review scores that i could find on it put it right below 90 at 89 points out of 100 and for us <laughs> i think this one I mean, it should have been a buy because 89 points, that's a pretty good score, especially at the price. And for a newer style of whiskey that doesn't have an establishment in the same way, I wonder if, uh, really if the new High West contributions to the blend is really making much of a difference. That'll be very interesting to see. But yeah, I think I, think I probably should have uh, bought this because I am a big lover of Midwinter's Night Dram, uh, which is you know, one of my favorite of this style of whiskeys. And, uh, you know, it is kind of a pain to get, though. The Midwinter's Nice Dram is kind of a pain in the ass. So, you know, getting a rendezvous rye that is more available and isn't so hyped and doesn't get so competitive is also pretty nice to have. And I think I'll probably end up picking up one of these. But at the time, at this visit, it was not a, a buy. Although right now, <laughs> after doing the review, I think it's definitely going to be a buy. So, yeah, not a buy. It is a buy, but I didn't buy it. So sad. The next up is a whiskey uh, that caught my eye, and I think it's something that I've really been rolling around uh, picking up because it has a pretty good age statement on it. It has a bit of a juge to it <laughs> because it is uh, French oak aged barrels, and uh, which is the Glen Levitt 15. Now, admittedly, the wife is going to be a little bit, and maybe by a little bit, I mean a lot bit more into scotch than I am, although she is dragging me into it, not so kicking and screaming. <laughs> and although they are not the first type of whiskeys that I will typically reach for when I'm looking to enjoy a nice adult beverage, each time I do, I thoroughly enjoy scotches overall. Uh, with the exception of Isla whiskeys, which I love dramatically and desperately, things like Ardbeg, Lagavulin, and Laphroaig, that have a very special place on the bar because I just can't get enough. I know it's sort of an acquired taste and it's not for everybody, but this Glen Levitt is interesting because as I had mentioned before, it is not that expensive. It has a fairly healthy age statement on it and it's going to be finished in French oak, uh, which is, you know, obviously a nice twist. The distillery of Glen Levitt, uh, which is the subsidiary of Pernod Ricard, yet another corporate whiskey oligopoly. <laughs> also an important note to note is that it is the number one selling single malt in the United States and the second largest single malt brand in the entire world, of course behind its Bet Noir and sort of evil twin Glenfiddich. Now though Glenlivet is really going to be a mass produced, everyday sipper of a single malt, I mean you can find it in most airport lounges, uh, when you get to that 15 year old version though it is sort of a step up from the standard 12 year old. We can see it here at the Costco and Hawthorne for a very reasonable price at $49.99 which of course will not break the bank especially when you put it up against some of the other 15 year old scotches like say McAllen which are going to be well over that $100 mark but also at Crotal Wine it has the same price at $49.99 and uh, you can also find it at BevMo of course the top end at $61.99 so there isn't really much saving here at Costco over the next price at Total Wine because they are the same but you know that's good too. One area where the Glen Levitt uh, 15 really does fall short is going to be on the ABV so the proof is quite low and look i don't need fire breathing bourbon every time i reach for whiskey but the abv on the glen levitt 15 is pretty abysmal just at that abv baseline to be enough considered whiskey at 40 percent or 80 proof and the thing is i don't even believe that the lower proof is there to allow for more subtle and nuanced perspective on their whiskey or to allow it to show through like you see with some of the hibikis and the japanese whiskeys which are a little bit lower abv but have a good reason i feel like they just kind of did this to save a couple extra dollars on the back end and really at that abv for that cost i mean you could basically get two handles of jack daniels <laughs> and uh, and call it a day that aside though the tasting notes on the glenlivet 15 mentioned that there are flavors of oak 
that are prevailing throughout, as well as cloves, nutmeg, and a hint of fennel, as well as raisins with nougat, which sort of sounds like something you get from a British holiday, like maybe they had it in the 19th century on Oliver Twist or whatever it was. It feels very British pastry-like. The taste scores that I could find on it are not not great. Uh, at 81 points out of 100, which is, you know, B's, they get degrees. Realistically, are you gonna settle for a B minus scotch when there are plenty of similar price point scotches out there that get way higher scores? Maybe a little bit lower age, but again, age is not everything. So this one is gonna be a pass for us. And I just think, well, one is the ABV is just, is just way too low. And also, I don't know, there's just something about it that turns me off. And as I say, age isn't everything on one side. Of course, on the other side of my mouth, I say it is the age that drove it to me because you get a good price for a 15-year-old uh, scotch. But again, it might be one of those situations of, you know, you get what you pay for. So either way, this one was a pass. I don't really have a great reason for it. Maybe I'll try it somewhere and see if it really kind of lives up to my expectations. And if it does, then I'll get it. But for the time being, we live at 15 gonna be a pass all right so that's it for today's whiskey wanders here at the costco in hawthorne and uh you know i, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and in fact I hope you enjoy all of our videos uh, whether it is the wanders or the hauls or the reviews or the unbottlings the unboxings really all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you and we got a bunch um and if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel to grow and we are growing. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. But also, you get notifications when our newest videos come out. It's good for your whiskey mojo and, and it might even please the whiskey gods and bring you some whiskey luck. And before I go, just remember, if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, maybe not in this case, <laughs> but somebody else surely will. And it might even be me. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. I'm out and adios.